Hi there and welcome to Penguin Learning. In this National 5 and GCSE Maths lesson, today we are going to go over the sign rule. To begin this lesson, we are going to go over a quick recap on trig ratios and how we can use them to solve problems related to triangles. And then we'll actually introduce what the sign rule is and how we can use it to solve problems similar to the ones that we did for the trig ratios. And finally, we're going to go over a few examples so that you have the knowledge and understanding and how to solve problems using the sign rule. So, let's get started. Ooh la la. Okay, so in previous lessons, we've had a look at how we can use trigonometry to help us solve problems related to triangles. And in particular, what we learned in the past was if we have a right angle triangle like this one here, then we can use trig ratios or so katoa in order to help us solve different parts of what we want to know about a triangle. So for example, we might be given one side, either the hypotenuse, the opposite or the adjacent, plus the angle that's included within the triangle, and then that would allow us to calculate one other side using one of the three trig ratios. Or perhaps we might have two sides that are known of the right angle triangle, and then we want to calculate what the included known angle would be within the triangle. But let's say we have problems where we don't have a right angle triangle and it's just a regular triangle, one without a 90 degree angle. But we also want to figure out stuff about the triangle. So let's say we already have this side and the length of this side. And let's just say as well that we have a known angle in here as well. And we would like to figure out the size of one other angle within this triangle. We can't do it using trig ratios because they only apply to right angle triangles. So if we want to do this in a triangle which is not a right angle triangle, then we have to figure out another way of solving these type of problems. And one of the ways that we can do this for any triangle is by using something what is known as the sign rule. And the sign rule, similar to what the trig ratios offer does, they provided a connection between the length of the three sides that make up a triangle and also the three angles that make up a triangle. So now let me explain what this sign rule means and give it some context. So first of all, I'm going to label the triangle that we have here. So a triangle is made up of three sides and three corners. First of all, I'm going to label each of the corners, capital A, capital B, and capital C. And each of these corners, A, B, and C, represent the angle within each of these corners. So this is capital A angle, this is capital B angle, and this is capital C angle. And similarly, we can now label each of the three sides that make up the triangle. And to do this, we have to think of which side is opposite which angle. So to begin looking at angle A, we can see that the side opposite that would be this side here. And that would mean then that this side is given the name also related to A, but this time we denote it with a small a. So this here is side A, and then the side opposite angle B would be over here. So that means that we can call this side small b. And then finally, the side that's opposite angle C would be over here. So that means we can call this side small c. And after we've done this, we can see that the sign rule contains only the values that we see here. So the three angles that make up the triangle, but also the three lengths. So the sign rule is read as side A divided by the sine of angle A is equal to side B divided by the sine of angle B, which is also equal to the side of C divided by sine of angle C. So basically all the sign rule is, is a ratio between one of the lengths that make up the side and also its paired angle that make up the side. So this here would be side A which we see up here, and then that would be divided by the sine of angle A, so the, whatever value of this angle here would be this first part of the equation. And all the rule says that if we go through each of the sides and each of its paired angles, then all of these are equal. So again, A divided by the sine of angle A is equal to B divided by the sine of angle B, which is equal to C divided by the sine of angle C. So how do we go about using this ratio? Well, if we're given a problem where we know three things out of this, then we can calculate one other thing. 
And what I mean by that is, let's say we have the length of side A, which would be here, and also side B, this would be this one here. And let's say we also know what angle A is in the equation, so we can take the sine of that angle, which would be in here. Then the sine rule would allow us to calculate what angle B is going to be. So that means we can calculate the sine of B because this is just a little equation right here. And then that would allow us to calculate the value of angle B as well. So let's have a look at an example to explain this a little bit more clearly. So here we have triangle ABC and we've been asked to figure out what the size of angle B is within the triangle which is this angle of course over here. Now the first step in a question like this is to analyse what pieces of information that we've been given and what we have to figure out. So what we have is the length of this side, we have the length of this side and we also have this angle within here and what we want to figure out is this angle B right in here. Now what I'm going to do is just label the sides the same way we did before because we have angles A, B and C. That allows us to label the sides opposite it with the smaller case letter. So for example, this is side A because it lies opposite angle A. This is side B and this is side C. Now if we take a look at our sine rule over here, we can then figure out what pieces of information we already have within this equation and what we want to figure out. Well, we know the length of side A and also side B, so I'm just going to highlight that. And then what we also have is the size of angle A right in here, we know that's 75 degrees, and therefore if we know what the size of angle A is, then we can figure out what the sine of A is, and what we want to figure out is the size of angle B, so that means that what we want to technically figure out in our sine rule is the sine of B, and that means that our equation can be cut short and simplified to only these four values. We don't have to know anything about the C values, both the side and the angle, and there isn't any information given to us about the C values that will help us in our equation. So that means that we can just simply write that A divided by the sine of A is equal to B divided by the sine of B. And now what we can do is put in our values which we already know. So we know that A is equal to 9 and the sine of angle A is the same as sine of 75 degrees which we've been given. And we know that's equal to B, so that's 4, divided by what we want to figure out, which is the sine of B. So because this is our new equation, we already have three of the values which we know. We know 9, we know the sine of 75, and we also know 4. And what we want to do is calculate B. So that means that we can rearrange this equation in order to give us something first for the sine of B, and then after that we can calculate what B is. So just now I'm going to rearrange this so that we have the sine of B as the subject of the equation. So the simplest way to do this to begin is we want this sine of B on the top. And to do that, what we can do is just flip both sides of the equation so that this comes on the top and so does this that comes on the top as well. So we're just flipping both fractions on either side of the equation. So we will have the sine of 75 degrees divided by 9 is equal to the sine of B divided by 4. And now we have this on the top, what we can do to have it by itself is move this 4 over to the other side. And because the 4 is on the bottom, it's currently being divided by so that means if we move it over to the other side, it's going to be multiplied by whatever's here. So we can then write the sine of B, so just moving it over to the left instead of the right, is equal to, we're bringing the 4 over to the other side. So it's going to be 4 multiplied by the sine of 75 degrees, all divided by 9. So all we did that step was take this 4 over to the other side, and it's now been moved up here, which we have right here. And now to simplify, I'm just going to do this in my calculator. So I'm going to do 4 multiplied by the sine of 75 degrees, all divided by 9. And doing this, we should get an answer of 0.429 to 3 decimal places. And we're nearly done, but we still have to do one more step 
So we know what the sine of b is equal to, we know that's equal to 0.429, but what we want to figure out is the size of angle b, so that means we just want b by itself, but because we have the sine of b, we have to get rid of this sine on this side. And how do we do that? Well, what we have to do is take the inverse function of sine, which is written as follows. We would say that b is equal to the inverse of sine, and we just write that as sine to the power of minus 1, and that little minus 1 to the power indicates that we've took, took the inverse function of the sine, and of course, we take the inverse sine function of the value that we had, so 0 0.429, and then in order to take the inverse function on your calculator, what you want to press is number 1, press shift, and then after that, press whichever function you want, in this case it's the sine. So to get the inverse function, you press shift, and then sine, and then we should get this sort of thing appearing on our calculators. We put in this value right here, and that means we should get a value of 25.4 degrees, and that answer is to one decimal place. So that shows us how we can use the sine rule to calculate an angle contained within the triangle. So we've calculated this angle here, and what we were given was this side here, this side here, and one other angle. So two sides, one angle, allowed us to calculate this angle here of B. So to go through the steps, how we did this again one more time was, the first thing that we have to do is make sure that the angles and the sides are all labelled correctly. So we have capital A, capital B, and capital C, with the opposite sides of small a, small b, and small c. We then look to see what information we were given. So we had this side of 4 centimetres, a side of 9 centimetres, and an angle of 75 degrees. And then that allowed us to sort of highlight what pieces of information we have within the sign rule, and then identify what we want to figure out, which was angle B right in here. And that allowed us to get rid or simplify our sign rule to four values instead of the whole six. And it's just a case of putting in the values that we know, rearranging it using some algebra, and then recognising that at the end, when we have the sign of B, that means we have to take the inverse sign of the other side in order to get an answer for angle B by itself. Okay, let's have a look at another example now. This time we have a triangle here, A, B and C, and we're asked to figure out the length of B, C. Now when we're asked to figure out a length like this, what we do is identify the two corners that are in question, so B and C, so here to here, and that means that this here is the length BC on the side. So this is what we want to figure out, and what we already have is this length right here, and also two angles in here as well. Now what I'm going to do is label each of the sides. So this here, the one we want to figure out is actually side A, because it lies opposite angle A, and this is going to be side B, and this is going to be side C. Now looking at the sine rule, which is A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which is equal to C over the sine of C. And of course, what we want to figure out in the question is this here, the side A. And that means that A over sine A must be included in our equation. Now let's just highlight what we already have given as well. We know what side C is, we know what angle C is, and we also know what angle B is as well. So because what we want to figure out is side A, and we have two pieces of information about the C's, both the side and the angle, then we also want to include that in our equation. And although we know what sine of B would be, we don't know what the length of B is going to be, so we're going to leave that out. And our equation, which contains six variables, is going to be simplified to four. So to write this out, we can say that A divided by the sine of A, is equal to C divided by the sine of C. Now you might be thinking, we don't actually know what the value of A or sine A is, we don't know what this angle is in right here, we weren't given that in the question, but what we were given were the other two angles, both 95 and 40 degrees. And if we have two angles that make up a triangle, we already know the two angles, then we can calculate what the third angle is, because we know that all three angles in a triangle must add up to give 180 degrees. So we can say that angle A plus angle B plus angle C has to equal 180 degrees. So therefore A 
plus 95 plus 40 will equal 180 degrees and if we take the 95 and the 40 over to the other side then we're going to end up with an answer that A is equal to 45 degrees. So now we can put values into our equation and we can say that A divided by the sine of angle A, which we said there was 45 degrees, we can say that's equal to side C, which is 4, divided by the sine of angle C, which is 40 degrees. And then what we want is A by itself. So that means what we have to do is take this sine of 45 over to the other side. And because it's dividing on this side, when we bring it over, it's going to be multiplied or times on this side. So we can say that A is equal to 4 multiplied by the sine of 45 degrees divided by the sine of 40 degrees. And then if we put this into a calculator, we should get an answer of 4.4 centimetres and that is to one decimal place. So the question asked what the length of BC was, but from our knowledge and understanding, what we did was just label this beside BC just as small a. So that means that BC or the side A is just equal to 4.4 centimetres. And we did that using the sine rule. Okay, so let's go over a quick recap we had on this lesson on the sine rule. We said that if we have any triangle with three corners, capital A, capital B, and capital C, we can then label the opposite side of these corners small a, small b, and small c. We can use the sine rule in order to relate the length of each of these three sides to the angles that make up the triangle. And the sine rule reads as a over sine a is equal to b over sine b is equal to c over sine c, and a, b, and c on the top represent the sides, and this capital A, capital B, capital C that we're taking the sine function of represent the angles. And we can use the sine rule first of all if we want to calculate an angle, let's say angle B. If we're given for example the length of side A and side B and also the size of angle A. Or we can use the sine rule in the second case where we want to figure out the length of a side, let's say side A, if we know one other side, side C for example, and any other two angles, so angle A and angle C. Using the sine rule in this manner would then allow us to calculate the length of side A. So I hope this video on the sine rule has been helpful to you, and if that's been the case, be sure and give the video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions on this topic, be sure to comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you'd like to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel or head over to our website at penguin-learning.com. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.